when the character started off, she's pretty much a blank slate. Yeah. And then about midway through, all of a sudden, she's just like you see her personality. And are you kind of saying that whatever your personality is, whether you have your memories or not, that's going to come through? Yeah. I mean, you know, identity and what makes us who we are is something that we're really going to explore over the course of the first season, especially. Uh, you know, and that. You know, how does your past define you? And when you take that away, like, what kind of person are you? Is is there a are you a is there a, like a innate goodness or an innate badness in people? Um, it's uh, so yeah, it's something that we're really experimenting with. But I think you know, yeah, I think even though all of her personality, so to speak, has been or all of her memories have been peeled away, her personality is still very much intact, and and she's somebody that you know. When she hears someone in trouble, she she walks in that direction. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, it's it's a fun thing to explore with her. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Great. There's such a kind of outcry for female action heroes. People say we don't. Have yeah. Enough. Is there then a responsibility with blind spots to kind of do it right and make sure it delivers? We're gonna do it right. We have uh, basically, you know, like the reality is, is like. We're so, so lucky to have Jamie Alexander. <laughs> I mean, there are very few people in the world that can do what she does physically. And and then to have that and have her be like such an amazing actress with such incredible depth. You know, the character is so fun because she's like lethal, but she's also insanely vulnerable, you know? And so to be able to play that vulnerability and, and also be able to kick ass, for that to exist in the same person is like real rare and so so yeah so no absolutely it's something you know I've been getting a lot of questions where like this today where people were like was this originally a man and then you like switch switch it to a woman no it's like always a woman like it's like I think I think part of what the pilot is trying to do is kind of subvert that like you know um, uh, you know like shivering victimized woman you know that we see like so many people tell me when they read the pilot they're like ugh, another Another terrible crime against a woman in the middle of New York. But then to see her, you know, take ownership of who she is and take action against the people that did this is like it's pretty exciting to see. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's really the crux of the series. Is like, who is Jane Doe? Is the first season art. You know, I, I feel like. Uh, hopefully if we do multiple seasons, but like, you know, uh, I, every season should feel like a novel in a series of books that you like. So every season's got to have a beginning and a middle and an end. And so, um, yeah, absolutely. Who who she is, is she a good guy, is she a bad guy, uh, is something she's going to struggle with because even if she was, say, a bad guy in the past, does that mean she's a bad guy now? Or if, she's a, if she was a good guy in the past, does that mean she has to be a good guy now? So it's, it's all of those questions about like, uh, uh, again, about whether the past defines you or not. Like I certainly, I'm sure we all have people at this table have a few regrets in their lives that you know have maybe defined us. And what what would it be like if those were suddenly gone? What what would it be like if we were free of those? In some ways, like insanely liberating. But then in other ways, you know, I'm I'm that person because I went through those experiences. So so it's it's an interesting thing to play with. How does the mystery man kind of play into that? Well, you know, someone designed and made these tattoos and put them on her body. And the the mystery man, the you know, we call it the ruggedly handsome man in the script, is, uh, 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 and yes, I was asked to play it. Um, I said, no, I'm too busy. Uh, uh, he's part of a larger organization that you'll get a sense of as the series continues. He's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Is, is it a case of kind of holding back a lot or will we be strip feeding out season yeah. every No, man, you're going to get so much. I mean, the great thing about, I think with a show like this, you can't just like, huh, who is she? And then like, you know, like have an answer, a little hint, episode six. We've come up with like a phenomenally complicated backstory. And the great thing about that is, you know, we have the time to tell it. And we have the time, we have a lot of cards in our deck so we can flip them. You know, there's there's going to be major revelations in every episode in the first season. And, um, um, uh, and so, yeah, I think I think I, I think that's important. It's a balance that we all have to find, though, because like as an audience, like you just like voraciously want, right? Yeah. And so and so and the shows that just deliver at that pace, they burn themselves out pretty quick, you know. And so, 
so we have a plan we think it's a good one and and you know like I've actually you know gotten feedback from the network occasionally where they're like are we giving away too much you know which is great that's a great position to be in and um, and I'm always like no because we have so there's so much story yeah it's always more yeah. it's always more yeah you know obviously great sweater by the way yeah. one of the biggest hooks is those tattoos everyone's a puzzle yeah can you talk about creating those puzzles you said you guys are seeing on the staff and right puzzles you need yeah, we have we have David Kwong, who's a New York Times puzzler uh, expert and, and a magician. You know, like people are Sweet. the regular the that typical job that we all have. And uh, so he was very involved. We talked with like map makers, puzzle makers, uh, cryptologists, tattoo artists. Obviously, this is something we've been like designing in the back of our minds since we started uh, pitching the show in August. Because you know, every week, you know, the case of the week. I hesitate to call it that, but like the the close ended story emanates from her body and so and that's a fixed thing that we established in the pilot so there's got to be a lot of story on that body and it can't be stuff where you're like sneaking in tattoos where they're like hey wait that giant eagle wasn't on her back <laughs> last week well they can't so you know I think the casual viewer maybe wouldn't notice but this is the type of show that we know people are gonna freeze frame and try to solve some of this themselves you know that's and so exactly what I was thinking. yeah and so it's like it's it is designed in such a way where like we really just had to like we had to do a lot of story heavy lifting before we even shot the pilot because you know we're locked we're, you're building a treasure map so you have to know what the treasure is before you build the map if that makes any sense. Yeah. So you talked about, um, you know, how Jane is kind of perfect for this role. Can you talk about some of the other actors as well? Sure, absolutely. I mean, Sullivan Stapleton, you know, they were the two, there was this like, we wanted both of them, and there was this article that came out on like Deadline Hollywood, it was like, the two hottest actors in pilot season, and we were like, oh god, we're never, <laughs> we're never gonna get either of them, let alone both. But I think, I think what's so great about Sullivan is that Kind of like Jamie, you know, like he's like, have you guys met? I don't know if you've met Sully. He's like, he's like, a, he's a man. He's a, he's a terrifying, like, man, man, you know. But he can play the hurt that's inside of this character so beautifully, and it it makes him a fuller character. It grounds him in a reality as opposed to just being like, I'm an FBI agent, I punch, I punch people, you know. Like it's like he can do that great, but he can do those those quiet scenes with him and Jamie are. Or what's going to make the show work or not? And the chemistry that those two have is like really explosive. Like that when we filmed, have you guys all seen the pilot or yeah? When when we filmed the in their their first encounter in the interrogation room, like it literally like like, like the lights shorted out, like it crackled in there. And so uh, so he's amazing. And then of course like Marianne Jean Baptiste, I can't say enough about. Most shows, by the way, like you're very lucky to get your first choice in any of the roles. We got our first choice in all seven of the roles. So like. That's that's insane, you know. Like to be able to have that and and a get those people and then b have them like you know there's a lot of people that have to say yes to these things and so like to have everyone on board it really speaks to the caliber of our cast like Academy Award nominated Marianne John Baptiste Rob Brown who's just been like you know everyone knows Rob's just amazing Audrey Esparza Ashley Johnson of course is so so happy to have Ashley on the show and um, uh, and then Quiley Roach like I've never done a show before where in the editing room, you don't have you, you always have to protect someone in the editing room. There's always someone that's like, ah, oh, they're not great at that, or they're not, you know, they you gotta you gotta use your tricks to like make them seem amazing. Literally everyone in the show you can cut to at any point, they're doing something great. Like so to have that as a storyteller as we move forward and it becomes an ensemble piece, you know, it's like to have that depth of talent is so exciting for us, you know. You know, you said essentially you're going to turn on. Yeah. When you don't know how long the show is going to run, how do you map out the end point? Well, I know what the end point of the treasure map is, and it's not the end of the show, if that makes any sense. So it's uh, the treasure map leads into something else on which the tattoos are also play a role in. I can't really go into much more than that. But it's like, so the tattoos are always a pivotal part of the of the, of the show, but uh, but the map does have an end point. That, that, go ahead, go ahead. We, they picked up 13 with a potential for 22 in this first season. Yeah. Yeah, we're a fall show, so unless we tank, we'll, we'll hopefully do 22. Yeah. yeah. I, I will have to say, I, I've watched the trailers for pretty much all the new shows, yeah. and Blind Spots is the highlight oh, thank of, you. Of, of them, and I'm really excited to see the show. And I guess, uh, 
Um, my question is, you said you had to like build all of this ahead of time, which boggles my mind. How did you like? How long did you guys have with all the writers in the writers' room or whatever? It was a lot of just Greg and I, to be honest, because we hadn't write, we hadn't hired a staff, and then and then the staff. I mean, again, we were picked up pretty early, so we got our first choice on writers too. It's like it's like everyone's like, oh, the show's turning out so great. I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm managing the Yankees. Is why, like, everyone on the show is amazing. So uh, so the writers have really brought so much to the character work and like where these where, where these tattoos could possibly lead in ways that like don't break what we've already established, if that makes any sense. So yeah, it's a very communal process between us, the writers, the designers, and yeah. Um, we know that um, Jamie obviously is great at this stuff, which you can out. Yeah, yeah. Sully, I love him on Strike Pass. Yeah. So, I mean, he can clearly do that stuff too, so we're going to see a lot of him. Like, oh, sure. Oh, sure. He's got a great fight sequence in the pilot. I mean, like, it's like, he's, he's like, he's itching, like, he's just like, hang me off a helicopter. I want to do this. I want to, I was like, I want to just like fall off a motorbike. I want to, he's like, I want to do a fight in the snow. I was like, he's got all these like great ideas and we're like all right man I'll remind you that the fight in the snow was your idea when it's you're six hours in and you're like I can't feel anything yeah so no absolutely and I think to be honest like you know Sully came on my radar after Animal Kingdom I don't know which is like which you know he was not an action star he was just like an amazing actor that I'd never seen before and so the fact that he's like since really like become this like like a guy from the 300 you know to have that guys look and body inside like on top of like an extraordinary instrument of a of a, an amazing actor you know again we you don't get that a lot yeah